This was my first trip to the Philippines to meet my long distance relationship. She's already guided me through Manila and even the province. We experienced boat parades and local foods with her family, but now we're on our own and we just arrived in Cebu and it's about 10 p.m. Here's what happened. Our plane landed at the airport and Joy usually uses a service called Grab to get around the city. And it's kind of like Uber or Lyft. I think for me it's cheaper and safe because when you book a Grab, you know who is your driver, what's the phone name. With Grab, you can lock in a price up front to avoid getting ripped off by anyone. But we couldn't find the address to the hotel in the Grab app. And so we were kind of stuck with using a taxi. And it wasn't very far from the airport either. It was like 10 minutes away. But the taxi cab driver kept driving around in circles like it was completely lost. But I didn't know what was going on because they were speaking in Bisaya. And afterwards I found out Joy said, Hey, Kuya, I'm not going to pay you if you just drive around and around in circles. He's just trying to trick us. But he was acting like he was confused, you know. He was, he was yeah. acting like he didn't know where to go. Yeah, he's acting like confused, like he don't know the place. I am with a foreigner. He thinks that he has a lot of money, that's why. Apparently it's called taking the long way when taxi drivers do that. And it was my first impression of Cebu, and so it kind of made me a little bit nervous about Cebu that first night. But that changed the next day. This is where we're staying. This place was really nice and clean. I found it on Booking.com. Cebu, or Lapu Lapu City, was really busy. It was constant activity. It kind of felt like a city version of the province. And Joy was really nervous about me crossing the street on my own, so she insisted on coming with me everywhere I went. And I almost got hit here, so I guess it makes sense that she would help me. Every square inch of this apartment was beautifully designed, and surprisingly it only came out to about $16. We found a cool balcony up on top, and so we ended up recording about an hour-long interview about the differences in our cultures but there's so much background noise that you can hardly hear anything we're saying. Joy made sure her man was looking guapo, and then we headed out to explore the city. Now in the Philippines, everybody seems to do their laundry every day instead of leaving it pile up for a week like they do in America. Here's a little laundry shop we brought our bag of laundry to. And laundry shops are different than in America as well. These are like full service little laundry shops where they wash and fold your clothes for you, and then you pick it up the next day. It literally took us two seconds to catch a ride on a trike. And this driver ended up transforming my perspective on Cebu. We'll talk about him a little later. But for now, we're focused on finding food at a local market. In addition to experiencing the culture, I was looking for some coffee and some eggs. Things that my stomach were a little bit more familiar with, just because I felt a little bloated from some of the local foods. It's funny because I wanted to just explore, but Joy was laser focused on finding exactly what I wanted. Yeah, that's right. That's what I wanted. And coffee was the thing I wanted right now, so here we go. So we got coffee, and it's 25 cents? We both forgot the price, but let's just say it was really cheap. Something like under 50 cents. And what market is this? Lapu Lapu Public Market. The what? Lapu Lapu Public Market. Okay, whatever, what she said. Joy's voice is incredibly soft, especially when we're out in public. I can barely hear anything she says. She actually lost her voice for about a year and a half and couldn't speak at all until she had surgery on her voice box and now she has a voice, but it's only about 50% of the volume. Her raspy, soft voice is kind of endearing to me, actually, but I can hardly even imagine what it would be like to not be able to speak at all, especially in a place as loud as the Philippines. Hello. 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 She was excited about me vlogging about her restaurant, so I just kept filming. Joy was really excited about getting barbecued Filipino food because she'd been working with the Chinese for about three years and so she ate mostly Chinese food. I bring Jason to the market that he has no idea on eating all those kind of food. Well, I just want him to try. That's rice. Oh, you just gra you just would grab it then? Yes, and no. eat it. how many do you want? It seems like you really do need a guide to go to a place like the Philippines for the very first time. There's just so many things that I just had no idea what to do. Oh, is that good with the dark spot? <laughs> it's not a dark spot, it's a violet color. It's a violet color, okay. It's a design. Okay, but you know what you're doing. I don't. My love, I am a provincial girl. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Honey. Okay, so I can tell. tell. Explain these again. These are intestines, but little balls. This is sorizo. What? Sorizo. Sorizo. 
And this is a hot dog. Uh, and this is the intestine. That's intestines. A little chicken. A little chicken. This is liver. Liver. Wow. I wasn't expecting her to get all the barbecue food, but now that she got it, I couldn't help but try one. When we were in the province, I tried pig intestines, so I figured it wouldn't be much different from chicken intestines, and yeah, these were delicious actually, kind of rubbery like noodles. They're very good. But I filled up on eggs just to make sure my stomach can handle it. Remember Kuya from earlier? I'll give Kuya food also, because he's so nice. I mean, he's so nice, because I was asking him how much should I pay him. If he gonna drive us to go around. Yeah, I didn't even realize that they struck up a deal and that Kuya was waiting for us while we were eating. Apparently they recognized each other's Basaya accents and knew that they grew up around the same place. Well, we've become friends because he's a nice person. And he not really took advantage of us. He basically became our personal chauffeur and took us everywhere we needed to go and really took care of us. He drove us around for a couple hours that day to a couple different places before he dropped us off back at the house to relax for a little bit. But he gave us his cell phone number and said, hey, when you're ready to go back out tonight, give me a call. So that's what we did. I really wanted to go to a night market somewhere in Cebu that I heard about in a YouTube video, but apparently they were all closed at this time on this day. So um, we didn't really know where to go, and so we just asked Kuya, like, hey, is there a, a good place that you would recommend that we can go to get some really good authentic food that's not too pricey? And he ended up taking us to a really good spot. We surprised because I thought the food was good for one. But it's good for four people. And it was about eight dollars for the whole meal with drinks and everything. And so we brought in Kuya, who's our driver. And it's gonna like shy. So much meat in here. It was a ridiculously good meal, and we wouldn't have found it without Kuya either. Just the one thing about Filipino food is lots of meat and fat. It's so good. Yeah. And now for my favorite memory of Cebu. And it's all because of our new friend Kuya. You see, we had to go to the airport at 4 a.m. and so we needed a taxi at 2 a.m. But after being scammed by our first airport taxi, we decided to ask Kuya. He said he could help, but the airport didn't allow trikes or pedicabs, so we'd have to take motorcycles. Would we mind that, he asked. Sure, why not, I said. Now, I don't have any footage of this, but I wish I did. But if you close your eyes with me, I think I can help you experience how it felt. Our alarm clock went off at 2 a.m. And sure enough, Kuya and his friend were waiting for us with sweet motorcycles and extra helmets. We jumped on the back of the motorcycles and squeezed our luggage between us and the driver and took off. The streets were completely empty. It felt like a cross between the opening of Akira and maybe a Tron movie. I don't know, that's why I'm playing this music. The city was empty, but still glowing with energy. Little blue lights dotted the streets like an 80s video game as they streaked past us. We pulled up to the colorful airport entrance after about 10 minutes. We thanked Kuya and his friend, and he said, if we're ever back in Cebu, give him a call. He'll take care of us.